All right guys, so today we're gonna check out these two gimbals. Now, if you're not sure what a gimbal is, it's actually a stabilizer for your phone. This is the very popular DJI Osmo Mobile 2, and this is the less known Moza Mini Me. I'm actually gonna show you today why I think the Moza Mini Me is probably the better gimbal. I will talk about real concrete examples as far as features, um, what it has available, and how these two gimbals differ. Now, if you are interested in this kind of stuff, you can check out some more things as well. I did do a review or more of a um, guide really for the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. I'm gonna link it up and down below as well. And also check out betterlifereviews.com. So over there I have a full guide pertaining to accessories for the Osmo, for the Moza, and all the kind of gimbals like that, like microphones, um, tripods, and all kind of stuff if you're interested in that. And also there's lots of excellent daily deals that I'm posting there as well. Um, it's a newly redesigned site. So if you haven't checked it out before, make sure to and let's get into the review. All right, now as far as the unboxing experience, they both have a very similar unboxing experience, similar size cases, um, slightly different. So on the Osmo Mobile 2, you get this very typical um, sort of foam case that comes from DJI. It's very protective and very, you know, hard and rigid. Um, so it does a good job, good job of protecting, but it's not really, you know, that meant to be, you know, a long-term case. Um, as you can see, it did separate there. Now it'll still go in there and, and work, um, but it's kind of limited. You can, it fits the gimbal very well. You can put a charging cord in there, maybe a small tripod. I actually modified it to fit the tripod by kind of cutting it out. Um, but the DJI does not come with a little mini tripod. This is actually uh, one I have from a different kit in my other video. And the Moza comes with a different kind of case. This is uh, more of, you know, kind of a long-term use kind of case. So it's this kind of a faux carbon fiber thing going on. Looks pretty good in my opinion, black and red. And uh, most importantly, it's very functional. So the Moza fits in there perfectly, um, as well as some other accessories if you want, some small accessories like the tripod and guides and uh, that kind of stuff. Um, it's not thick enough to fit like a large microphone or anything, but it works very good um, initially. And that will zip up, you know, so it's more of a, a long-term type of case. And over here, you even have two little eyelets, which I didn't know what these are for at first, but actually you can put, um, you can put like a strap there to put it around your shoulder as well. Now it doesn't include that, but you can buy that. Um, so overall, it's a very good case. It comes with the Moza, and the Moza also comes with a little mini tripod as well, this one here. So this is really important to have a little mini tripod. Uh, when you're setting it up, you know, trying to hold this and position your phone is very frustrating. Um, and additionally, it's super important for things like time lapses, motion time lapses. It's really impossible to hold your phone that steady for that period of time. Um, so you really need a little mini tripod. Now these are only a couple bucks, but it is nice that it comes with it. Uh, if you want to do something more advanced, like you want to have accessories or you want a very stable base, I recommend this one here. It's pretty inexpensive as well. And I'll link it down below. Um, and this can be used for, you know, either any one of these or really any phone gimbal. It's just the quarter inch mount, uh, the screws to the bottom. And uh, overall, it's a very good stand. You might be wondering how much these two cost. The DJI Osmo Mobile 2 retails for $139, which is still, you know, a pretty good deal. Much cheaper than our initial Osmo. Um, but the Mosa Mini Me actually retails for only $109. And you can even find it for $99 sometimes. Um, so I'll drop some links down below for, uh, for that so you can um, check it out and see what the best available price is now. So it's a really good, excellent price, you know, for, um, for something that has so many features. So let's talk about some of the features and how these two differ. Um, as far as physical design goes, on the front of the Osmo, you have a mode button, which is also the power button. You have a four-way joystick to control it. And you have a uh, record slash take photo button. Then on the side, you have a zoom rocker. On the back, you have um, a USB port here to um, plug a cable in and charge your phone. So it also works as a power bank. And then on the side around here, you have the actual um, micro USB attachment where you plug it in and charge this up. On the Mosin Mini Me, similar in some ways, not similar in other ways. Um, so this actually has the four-way joystick as well. It has some light indicators here, so it'll tell you and how much battery you have. There also is that on, on the uh, DJI as well. It's a, it's a four kind of dot system uh, where this has, you know, this thing on the side, it's slightly different. And then there's also some indicators here as well to indicate pitch follow, PF or y'all follow, just tells you which mode it's in. Um, and then it has, uh, most importantly, this dial. So this dial will actually spin to allow you in the Moza Genie app, which is what it uses, um, to navigate through that app and to choose and select different things. Uh, and then it has the take photo or start recording button in the center. So the Moza has a lot more functionality in the actual gimbal itself, not relying on the app. Um, however, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 is still very functional as well, but it uses the app a little bit more. So let's talk about a few of the technical features and then we'll get into why I think the Moza Mini Me is better. 
So as far as battery life goes, in that category, the Osmo Mobile 2 does win. These both have inbuilt batteries. Uh, however, on the Osmo Mobile 2, the claim battery life is 15 hours, while it's 10 hours on the Moza Mini Me. Now, 10 hours is more than enough for most people, but if you are out the entire day, uh, if you're charging your phone with the gimbal, because you can use them both as a, like a power bank, um, then it will deplete the battery. Now, you can also charge it with a power bank, um, additionally, even while you're using it. So it's not much of a factor, but it is something to consider. And then as far as the like limitation of these devices, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 has a 70 de 170 degree uh, pan rotation. So if you're here like this and you're moving around in a circle, it can rotate 170 degrees, but at that point it will stop and you can't go any further. Where with the Osmo Mobile 2, there's a 360 degree pan rotation. So you can go around and around and around in circles all day long. Um, and that becomes more important when you're doing things like tracking yourself. So if you're holding it in your hand and you're walking around, you can literally walk around it in a circle and it will keep recording you as you're doing that. Other things, uh, the roll rotation on the Osmo Mobile 2 is negative 90 to 70 degrees, where it is much higher on the Moza Mini Me 310 degrees. Then the tilt or the pitch rotation is going to be plus or minus 170 degrees on the Osmo Mobile 2, while it is 165 degrees on the Moza Mini Me. So they're very similar in that regard. All right, let's move on to other factors specifically related to the Moza Mini Me. All right guys, so here we are actually in a different location. Uh, I got a little bit dark where I was. So now we're gonna talk about why I think the Moza Mini Me might actually be the better gimbal. And the first reason for that is max payload. So the Moza Mini Me has a max payload of 300 grams, which is really high. It's actually higher than any other gimbal that I'm currently aware, aware of for a phone. Uh, while the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 has a max payload of 202 grams. Um, so for instance, my new um, Samsung Galaxy Note 9 is 201 grams. So that will just work according to their specifications for the Osmo Mobile 2, while on the Moza Mini Me, you have plenty of room to play with there. Um, so that becomes very important, you know, when you're doing things like balancing the phone, uh, if you're adding accessories to it. So you actually can add accessories to the Moza Mini Me. Uh, so I did talk about a Rode Video Micro. Uh, so a Rode Video Micro plus the weight of my phone is just right around at 300 grams with all the mounting accessories and all that. Um, it is a little bit of a strain on there, especially since you're um, putting it you know, on top on one side. So to balance that is, is kind of difficult. Um, and then as you tip it to a certain point, it can overload the motor still, but it does a much better job of balancing the phone. So as phones get larger and bigger, and if you just want to add accessories and stuff, um, even cables that can kind of get caught in all that, the Moza Mini Me has you know, a higher capacity and stronger motors. Also the thing that's really important to consider is, you know, as you can see this, Osmo Mobile 2 will collapse, right? Which is really cool for carrying it and putting it in the case and stuff, it comes smaller. And the Moza Mini Me does not do that. So you might think to yourself like, that's kind of silly, like are they just not very smart in engineering? But what you have to consider then, if you look at it closer, is how that affects the phone, right? So if you put, these two phones are very similar. This is a Note 9 and a S8 Plus. This is slightly longer actually. Um, so I'll give the advantage to, to the Osmo. But if you put these two phones into here, this phone, this one here, and this one here, and then you look at the arm, right? You can see how much of this phone extends beyond the arm of the Osmo, and that's gonna make it harder for the Osmo to balance the phone. Now this one has a longer arm that can't collapse, but if you look at it, you'll see that the phone is actually much more centered um, on how the gimbal sits. So there it's, you know, extends further out, grabs the phone further out, uh, and then you can even offset a little bit. And even right there about there, you're gonna be perfectly balanced left and right. So this has a better design as far as that goes, maybe not quite as convenient for collapsing, um, but better in terms of payload and also distribution of phone weight. So next thing to consider, which is uh, pretty simple, is the number of accessory mounts. So what I mean is the number of quarter inch mounts, like a typical tripod mount. So on most gimbals, like the Osmo Mobile 2, the uh, Freevision Vilta M, and the Zion Smooth 4, they have one mount while on the Moza Mini uh, Me, it has four different mounts. So this gives you a great ability to put accessories and stuff on the gimbal. Um, so if you wanna use like lights, microphones, that sort of thing, um, it gives you more options for mounting on here. So normally they're gonna be on the bottom, there's one. Now here there's one on the bottom as well, but then on the rear of the gimbal, there's a second one here up near the top of the handle. And then there's actually two different quarter inch mounts built into the top and the bottom of the actual phone cradle uh, for the device. So you have more options as far as mounting things. All right, so next is sort of like the elephant in the room or really the premier feature of the Moza Mini Me and that is built-in wireless charging. So you can actually put your phone here 
and they use magnetic coils to charge your phone if it's capable of doing wireless charging while you're using the gimbal. So they both have a power bank type of feature. Um, on the Mozumini, Mozumini Mi, it is on the arm. Uh, so you also have a USB port up here in the arm as well to charge, which is closer to where the phone is. Um, so you can use a shorter cable, which is great. And on the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, it is here. Now, if you're going to actually charge from that port and not use wireless charging, I definitely recommend getting like a right angle cable or something like that. Um, there is a, a splitter type device that comes, you know, that you can get for the iPhone as well. that will split it and have a power and an audio um, cable as well there. Um, so I would recommend that because if you use something like this, as you can see, you're really going to have to offset the phone in the gimbal. And if you do that, then, you know, it's going to be very, very hard for the gimbal to balance. And I'd say if you use something like that, um, it's actually going to be too much weight. I've used, tried to do that before, um, and it will actually throw off the gimbal and it will error out the, you know, the operation. I have to reset things again. So, so having that wireless charging built in is really game changing. Um, definitely recommend that for all gimbals going forward. It makes a huge difference in terms of just ease of use uh, and operation of the gimbal. All right, so next up is the number of modes that it has. So the Moza Mini Me has eight different modes that it can do as far as like following, free, that kind of stuff. Uh, where the Osmo Mobile 2 has uh, less modes. It has really follow all and free all. Um, so it allows you to either, you know, as you tilt the gimbal um, to kind of go down with it to follow where you're going or um, to keep it in the same plane of axis, you know, as you're currently in. So there's that. There is a pitch lock mode in the um, Moza, or I'm sorry, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 app. And um, there's ability to do that. So you can alter little things like that. Um, but on the Moza Mini Me, there is the ability to actually use a controller here. Uh, so it says FM. So there'll be uh, lights here. So uh, PF at the top and YF at the bottom. So pitch follow and yaw follow. And depending on uh, what setting you want, you simply double or click, or click, double or triple click that button. And that will then turn those features on and off. So it allows you to independently adjust the uh, pitch follow and the yaw follow. Uh, there's also a sport mode as well uh, you can build into this you can activate um, that also is on the Osmo Mobile 2 but it's in the app as well and um, that allows you to make quicker motions and that kind of stuff so it's really cool so definitely more modes on the Moza Mini Me then two really awesome modes that the Moza Mini also has that the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 does not is the inception mode and the selfie mode so on the selfie mode you triple click the lower wheel and it will actually spin the gimbal around so that you can use the rear camera of your phone and face it towards you for vlogging and that kind of stuff. And you can also can do that even while you're filming. Um, so you don't have to stop at all. You can literally just rotate it around in the middle. So this is super helpful for people like vloggers, anyone who really wants to tape themselves. Um, on the Osmo Mobile 2, you have to, to touch it and then use the front facing camera on your phone. But as people probably know, the rear facing camera on phones has, you know, much better resolution, better autofocus, better low light performance, and as overall, it's a much better camera. So the ability to use that very easily um, is really, really helpful. And then if you triple press the upper button, it goes into an inception mode, which is really cool. So that allows you to um, actually put the phone, put it out in front of you, and then you use the scroll wheel to go left or right. And as you tilt the scroll wheel, it's actually going to start rotating the gimbal around in circles um, and allow you to get those really trippy kind of shots where it spins. Um, you can change your plane of access and that kind of stuff. So it's sort of gimmicky, but it's also a very, very cool thing you can do. Um, I got a great shot in Mexico off the balcony, um, kind of the sky spinning and it looks really interesting. So definitely some kind of more advanced or interesting features um, that are usually only available in really high end phone gimbals. All right, so lastly, there's the app. So the app on these two are both good in their own ways and, and different. So I will say for the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, currently the app supports um, more things. So as far as um, time lapse and that kind of stuff goes. So if you're looking to do a lot of time lapses, hyper lapses, that sort of stuff, um, on the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, there is a time lapse, a motion time lapse, a hyper lapse feature, um, and those are kind of those are more advanced as far as what you're able to set and that kind of stuff on the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. So in that regard, I'm definitely better. Now there is a standard time lapse feature as well as a motion time lapse feature that actually works pretty well. Um, they're pretty equivalent in that respect on the Moza Mini Me and they're continuing to kind of upgrade things as well. Um, and speaking of that, then the availability to use different resolutions. Initially, I did not, uh, was not able to use 4K on the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, but they did update things and now on the S8 Plus, I am able to do 4K 30 on that. 
Also, it's on the iPhones. Um, it's compatible with that as well. So I did try to kind of get a list from different manufacturers, from DJI and also from Moza, to see you know which phones are 4K compatible. Um, but DJI does have a list of, of phones that work with their app, and they say that if it works with the app, it should have 4K recording. Um, so link it down below as well if you want to check that out. Um, but I can't really give you a dedicated list of which phones specifically definitely work with these two gimbals for 4K. Unfortunately, they couldn't provide that. Um, but like I said, 4K does work for the S8 Plus on the Moza Mini, uh, I'm sorry, on the DJI Osmo Mobile 2, but not on the Moza Mini Me. Um, I did just check it out recently. Now also with the S8 Plus, I had to actually go into the app. If you go to um, read more underneath the Moza um, Genie app, then you go down and you'll see a file you can click there, or a link rather, and you go to their website and download a file. I believe it's an APK file and install it on your phone. So if you're having issues with the, that phone or, or other phones, um, with loading the app, you can actually go and manually download that, and then I did that and it worked great. But it does only give me 1080 at 30 on the Moza Mini Me where I can get 4K with that. Now on the Note 9, um, and also on iPhones, like my wife's iPhone 7 Plus, I was able to get 4K recording on both of these gimbals, no problem. So 4K at 30, um, as well as 1080p at 30, and that kind of stuff. Now, neither one of these have more advanced uh, features as far as that goes, so I definitely would like to see, for instance, 4K at 60, which I have available on the Note 9, um, and 1080p at 240, which is slow-mo mode on the Note 9, um, or 1080 at 120, uh, so it's my phones, and, and also at 240 on some newer iPhones as well. Um, so those options are not available in the app. So if you want to use those more advanced frame rates, um, you will have to use something like Filmic Pro, which gives you, you know, some more options to um, kind of dive into those settings. You can use a lot of the pro features with the Moza Mini Me, so you can adjust exposure, uh, compensation, ISO, white balance, that kind of stuff, um, but you cannot um, you know, use this extended frame rates. So that's kind of how the apps compare. There's also a ton of other apps, or a ton of other features rather, in the Moza Mini Me app. All right. And both these gimbals do also support like an active track or a tracking of you or an object as well. Now a lot of people have criticized uh, Moza for not having the best tracking in that regard. Um, so if you're holding it in front of you and you select um, yourself, for instance, in the front camera, as you walk with the gimbal, it will actually follow your face. Um, so generally speaking, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 is kind of the king of that. Uh, but I will throw some clips up now. I don't want to form any opinions of using the front and the rear camera with both these gimbals, and you guys can take a look at them um, and compare which one you think does a better job. Alright guys, so that's basically the two gimbals. So I'll kind of leave it up to you to decide what it is that you like better. Um, but this is a good breakdown of things uh, in terms of how both of them work. So the Moza Mini Me, as you can tell, um, I like that one and that's one that I will be using. Uh, but there is some great time-lapse features built into the DJI. And of course DJI is a very large company with lots of resources. Um, but Moza is doing a great job of keeping up. And the Moza, as we said, does have a higher max payload, which is really important for handling heavier phones or accessories. It has built-in phone charging wireless charging, um, it has more accessory mounts, so four mounts versus one, and it has you know, uh, kind of a more comprehensive app in terms of the other stuff like manual exposures and, and filters and um, the ability to use this click wheel. So you use a click wheel and you actually can spin you know, around through things 
and select them. Um, so if you want to use your phone with a different app like Filmic Pro or something, the Moza Mini Me gives you a ton of features um, to use really even with your phone's inherent camera app where it's harder to do that with the um, DJI Osmo Mobile 2. Now there is actually a Osmo compatibility setting in Filmic Pro, for instance. Uh, so there is some extra features as far as controlling that um, that is better on the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. Um, it's not specifically built for the Moza Mini Me at this point, uh, and they probably won't do that to be honest. Um, but definitely the Moza Mini Me also is less expensive, about $30 to $40 cheaper. Um, and it's a really great gimbal in my opinion. So it's the one that I'll be using, but you guys definitely throw me some comments down below and let me know, you know, which one you think's better. Um, a lot of people probably are still gonna like DJI because they're a super popular company and a lot of people really trust them. Um, and I understand that, but in my impression, the Moza Mini Me is a pretty awesome gimbal. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you click subscribe if you like this video and wanna see future ones. Make sure you hit that bell to get notified of future videos as well. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you next time.